We've got those auction results uh, crossing the Bloomberg terminal. That auction of the long bond, the 30-year, coming in at 4.30%. Now, as we mentioned, we did have an auction back in uh, June, and that yield was 4.72. Uh, so crossing the terminal again, that yield 4.30 percent. Last time around, it was 4.72. I do want to go to uh, Brian Luke, who's been tracking uh, the uh, auctions for us this week. So, Brian, that yield, very different from what we saw last time around. That's right, Carol. We actually saw a lot of strong demand coming into this week's auction, that record four number of auctions that we had. Finally, we're seeing a little bit of a reversal in that trend. The trend today has been moving up in yield. Actually, the survey prior to coming out was three basis points higher to uh, where it was trading just a few minutes ago, and now we've actually moved one basis point higher. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here's the 30-year bond yield. It's moving up today, and it, that survey was at 4.29, and as you mentioned, we're getting a yield of over that, north of that, 4.3. Now, with regard to yesterday's auction, we call that the, you know, the Godzilla of 10-year notes. This year, this one, we'll call it the son of Godzilla because this is also the largest 30-year bond that's being auctioned. It's the largest one out there currently. So you talk about the, uh, the bid-to-cover ratio. As you mentioned, the 2.36, that's slightly softer or weaker than the average what we've seen in the previous months. Uh, it's actually right in there with the recessionary average that we've had. Um, in terms of the uh, cost of funding that the U.S. Treasury is going to be paying for to borrow money for 30 years, we're looking at something right along the lines of what we've experienced during this recession. That 4.3 is actually right on that right on the money with what we've actually seen during this recession. Hey Brian, just quickly, let's talk about indirect bidders. We've been watching so closely the interest uh, among investors. It looks like 50.21%. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think last time around it was 49%. No, that's correct. And uh, we're seeing an increased appetite for uh, indir indirect bidders. And those indirect bidders are the, again, foreign central banks as well as uh, professional money managers that are buying uh, these 30 year bonds for their clients and for their holdings of their, of their balance sheet. All right, got it, Brian. I do also want to get more on the results of this auction. For that, let's bring in our next guest. Is Michael Franzese. He's head of government bond trading at Standard Chartered. So, Michael, what do you think here? I think it was a good auction. Um, it was right what we needed after three really good auctions, especially after yesterday's 10 year note, just to get the market and it's up, keep it in its upward trend as stocks languish here at this 880 level on the SP. All right, and in terms of indirect bids by foreigners, I mean, we're still seeing investor interest here, aren't we? Yes, actually, I was predicting that it was going to be a little bit lower, around 42 to 43. And coming in at 50, as you said, that's actually very good for a 30-year bond, especially in this environment. Mike, what stands out most for you as a result of, the, of these auction results? Maybe not even just today, but this four-year, I mean, not four-year, but four days of auctions, it's kind of really unprecedented. Well, what is really good is that we got the supply out of the way. We were, everybody was expecting that because of this large amount of supply, that was the reason that it was keeping bond prices down and yields higher. Now that the supply is out of the way, we really have three weeks of no supply other than bills, and that it'll actually, we are predicting that interest rates will trend and grind lower as we approach the end of the summer. All right. Is that the bigger message here as we go through these auctions? Because as you know, there's been a lot of worry about whether or not you know, investors would be out there buying, what it would mean in terms of the yield play here. Um, what's the bigger message here? I think the big, biggest message right now is that the Fed is not in play. It's going to be staying at 25 bips for at least the next year, year and a half, and that you have the opportunity to pick up some bonds outside of five years into tens and thirties at a fairly good rate of return, and that you should still continue to have bonds in your portfolio as deflation is in a hold. Mike, sit tight for a second. Brian, I want to go back to you if you're there. I mean, I know you've been tracking the trade here for us in terms of the auctions. Any more thoughts here in terms of what we're seeing post-auction yeah. uh, results? Yeah, absolutely. Mike, I have a question for you because we, we've talked talked a little bit about the indirect bidders as well as the primary dealers and their interaction with the market. You know, last month uh, the, the federal or the Treasury changed the rules and now they lump the primary dealers with just the, the bids they take. Now, when you look at the competitiveness of how the primary dealers versus the indirect bidders, the indirect bidders are far more competitive. Do you have any comments about that? Why, why is that the primary dealers are backing off? I mean, they only get about a third of what they're actually bidding on versus two-thirds for the indirect bidders. Well, you have to understand the primary dealers, we have basically 13 to 15 primary dealers right now, and you're taking a majority of those dealers are applying their capital into better-sized trades, which means staying five years and under, picking up carry with not as much risk. By going out to 30 years, you're actually taking a lot of risk by going out there. So you'd rather have the indirect bidders in there supporting that market instead 
instead of having dealers applying their capital. The main thing is, is that the that the primary dealers right now have enough capital to support the shorter end of the market, where the majority of financing is going on for the government. So those buy and hold investors are really the ones that are most aggressive because they need to lock in that that return on the 30-year term. I think that they like the the fact that they're getting better than four and a quarter as as their money is. If you put it kept it in cash, there's a penalty for that. 25 basis points CDs under 20 under 20 bips. You know, take the risk to go out to 30 years while there's no deflation and a liquid. And bonds are fairly liquid. U.S. Treasuries are liquid. So as soon as the first sign of growth comes or inflation, you can actually exit it fairly quickly. Hey, Chris Valerio, you're down at the New York Stock Exchange. I want to bring you into this. Uh, any thoughts here? You know, I wanted to ask, well, first off, I wanted to give you a little reaction here on the floor. Certainly you had some loud noise when that auction came out. This is a fourth of the week. The reaction in the equity markets, not too much. I did have a question for Michael. Tying it into the equity markets, we're coming out of these four record auctions. People obviously use these yields to kind of determine their price earnings ratio, whether they want to get into the equity market. What do you think is going to be the response as far as a better place to be at this point? Well, you had equilibrium. What we considered equilibrium is when 10 years hit 4% and three years were at 2%. You had a nice what they called equilibrium. That's where the risk-reward capital could go into 10 years at 4% compared to what they were getting as a, as a yield dividend or as a PE or how much they're going to gain out of stocks. Right now, at 3.4 3 or 3.35 in 10 years, that equilibrium says right now that maybe the, now the investor has to choose between putting money into equities or putting money into the bond market. I still like bonds getting down to around three and a quarter, and then hopefully if we don't see any growth, you could see 3%, 2.88 by the end of the year. Hey, Michael, you know, you talked about, you know, supply was definitely holding a cap on prices. Everyone was worried about supply. We've gotten that now out of the way now that we're done with the auctions this week and done for some time. I mean, what's the key factor or factors for where kind of treasuries will be trading, let's say, over the next three to six months? Well, that all comes down to any signs of growth. Do we have, if this economy shows any sign of growing, like we had with the green shoots, we, you see that how that vacuum comes. We actually go right towards higher yields because everybody's worried about inflationary pickup. Right. But as of right now, as long as asset prices are declining, housing prices are declining, that's a deflation. And in deflation, you want to be in a fixed income security. It's a better return. All right, got it. Hey, Michael, thank you so much. Michael Francis, uh, head of government bond trading at Standard Chartered, breaking down that latest auction with us, our own Brian Luke as well.